Well, there are definitely some areas that could have used a little more prep work, but uh, there she is. We'll take on space viewing right there. And you know it, I got a freaking bug. No darn paint, so I'll have to sand that down tomorrow and hit that again. And I really could have used a little more paint right there. Fill in a few of those little air bubbles. I need to go back and touch that up too. <sighs> That's that. Yeah, I could have spent more time on it, I guess, as far as body works concerned, but I think it turned out pretty nice. And then, uh, I'm gonna, right now I'm gonna wood burn the name in the back, and then I'm gonna stain. Go ahead and stain the interior, and I'm gonna put the hot stuff on it. Uh, so we can sand down that blood spot over there. I've got to run right here too, and I need to get out. Painted it outside, and it was kind of cool, and I brought it in, and I think it uh, changed the temperature of the paint, made it run a little bit, so more than having any issues outside. Couldn't keep the bugs out of it. So that's that. Basically, I need the, the back part of the seat to line up with this guy. So, that's what we're doing now. And how you do it to get these bumps in, I did the easy one first. So, uh, as you put your foam in between, and this foam just came out of a, I don't know, something I got in the mail that was wrapped up in that to protect it. Put a piece of fabric behind it and then just sit you down here. And then uh, line everything up as close as you can get it. And then this guy. Start in the center. And let's see what we get. Uh, this machine doesn't have a back stitch, so but it does have a really neat feature. I wish all machines had this. This knee lever raises the presser foot, and so that allows me to adjust my tension slightly without using a third hand, and it's essentially a third hand. So, and the motor you hear running is the machine. Uh, I'm going to measure that. That center looks off to me. She's the biggest ruler that I have. Nine. Let me uh, fix that and I'll turn you back on. It looks, looks a little better. 
she doesn't have an extension on This machine will go through uh, 18 thicknesses of the numb. It kind of has a mean temperature, so. stitch closer than I wanted it. But I have to kind of pull it through because that foam pops everything up and makes it a little difficult to put it through there. So once you get the center one sewed, then you just go to either side. do a little bit of putting this border on. Basically what I'm going to do is make the two pieces face each other and put a stitch here and then we'll turn it the other way and that's when I'll add and make sure I have enough to go around this before I get too crazy. Uh, that's when we'll add the kind of finished stitch that I did. It wasn't perfect but it does kind of finish. Yeah, I got to finish the product out a little bit. So I'm going to start in the center of the bottom down here and we're going to try it. I'm going to keep the presser foot. Um, this little area here is called the presser foot. And I'm going to try and keep it. Ah, just pull the thread out. Nice thing about a leather needle. And it's got proven wrong, but the nice thing about a leather needle is the eye of the needle is. I'm just going to try and keep one tooth, so we're going to go one width in on the presser foot, this little guy, and that should allow it to turn really nice. It's going to give us a little more than a, I probably should go in just a little bit more, but it's going to give us a really nice uh, edge. I'm keeping with what I did on the previous cushion. That's what I did on the previous one, so we'll just, we'll just stick with that. In one foot width. On that. And I gotta keep looking on the bottom here. Should be close. That puts us in. That's pretty good. So we'll go ahead and put the needle down. And then I can just push in on the presser foot, turn it, and turn my fabric up. I'm 
So there's what we got. And what I usually do here is do a fit on the seat and make sure that, that we're good because you can see this is where the seat edge is. And that should be about right because I want my seam when I do my, my decorative seam around the edge, I want it to hit uh, about in the middle of the board. put it all together so this is what it looks like and now what we're going to do is turn and cut this off first. Okay. I'm not worrying about this because it's not a real seat cover. So we're going to go on this side and we're going to go around this edge just really close to where where that seam is there and then we're going to do the same thing on top. Stitch on top. So let me do just a little bit of that and get that going and then I'll turn you back on. So, when it's all said and done, we get something. It's gonna look like that. I think that looks pretty good. Missed the stitch up there. It's not worth going back for. Alright, let's take it down and see what it looks like in the car. So here's what we have. We got those seats mocked up. Uh, I did need to do a little touch up right in here to make this filler look like the rest of the stain. And then this piece is just, let's see here, it's copper pipe I cut a groove in and then just molded it around to fit that. It could be pushed in a little bit right there, but it's fitting and it's not popping out. So I'm gonna call it good. And then I've gotta put this around the bottom yet. Do some leather or vinyl overlay up there. So that'll go like that. And then I'm gonna do it on the inside of the doors too and put furniture tacks uh, in there, inside the cabin. Mostly just because I'm running out of screws and I don't want to go buy anymore. I'm trying to use up everything I've got in the hoard. So uh, I took one of these out to make up some windshield brackets. Oh, that's another story. It's kind of funny. <laughs> so I had a windshield and I had used stained glass um, framing to go around it and I tried to put a copper rivet through it and I busted it. So this little bracket is no more. Not usable. So those will go like that. I'll have to make another one. And I think those are good. 
Those are going to look really nice. So, and you can hear my husband and the kid in there playing. Uh, yeah, we're going to get this on and then uh, go take care of the kiddos for the night and come back down and get started back at it again. So we're down on beautiful Lake Monroe, Fall Harbor Day. That is our buoy crew out there. It's 28 degrees this morning, probably about 35 now. And they are out pulling the buoys out of the water. Gorgeous day on the lake. No wind, but the fog is amazing. They have the coldest job of the year. We put the people on the buoy crew that have had their heads examined and it's been determined they're not quite right. Just kidding guys. Incredible day.